Alrighties, Glee Season 3. So, I was pretty hesitant to go into this season after I'm viewing Season 2 because I felt like it was just going to be the exact same as Season 2, having a lot of short story arcs, going everywhere with everybody, and just not being that much of a likable product, and not the best goal in mind, and... For the first few episodes, it seemed like I was going to be right, because pre-sectionals, everything that I pretty much didn't like about Season 2 continued. Uh, short story arcs that are over with a snap of your fingers, such as, like, Quinn going all hippie-like and pushing away Will and Sue. Um, then there was the Glee Club, uh, becoming divided all over again when it seemed like at the end of Season 2, despite not winning the Nationals, they had one put the loss behind them, admitted that the, it wasn't a big deal, and that they're just, well, I'm more content with each other. But then, like, uh, Rachel and Finn are still having trouble. Puck distances himself from everybody again. And uh, just a couple of other things that I wasn't really liking. And then there was the, all the females going over to uh, Rachel's mother's singing group. Just that was totally unnecessary and just... Really, it's just like I said, they should have been past this, it seemed. And then there was also the story arc of Quinn and Puck trying to get their baby back from Rachel's mother. You had signed the documents leasing her over to Rachel's mother. It should be in the past. And why are you trying to do this a year and three months later? This is the kind of thing you do a couple months later. Huh? Because, like, I know that eventually various women, um... You know, agree to lease their babies and then really regret it later. Yes, but it shouldn't have taken that long. In my eyes, okay? Hmm. Obviously, I can't totally test that because I'm not a girl. <laughs> right. But then, like, once we get to sectionals, it was like a switch in this season just flipped, and everything just started to get better, because, like, the Glee Club got over the differences, and what differences still were there, like, um, that new love triangle between Ollie, uh, that girl with Asperger's, and, uh, the British-Scottish guy, sorry about that, there's so many characters to keep track of in this show. Just, it was just a lot better. This show got better story arcs, moving everybody along, such as, like, Will and Emma, Rachel and Finn, Quinn's relationship with everybody, Puck's uh, future, Finn's future, nice little bit on his father, actually, Sue making up most of the differences with everybody, a surprisingly nice story arc from Sam, who I was kind of disappointed that they wrote off early in the season, because I didn't particularly fully like his character in season two, but I felt like there was a little bit more to him than uh, whoever he replaced from season one, who seemed to be the only person not mentioned out of the entire original group. But what they brought him back for in here was actually pretty nice. And I do feel like the more supplemental people that were in the uh, Glee group this season, even though some of them have been here for a while, Sam, Tina, Ollie, that chick with Asperger's, and that British guy, I feel like they mattered a lot more than everyone from season two who was filler. Sorry if I pissed some of you guys off, but it's just how I felt, okay? Right, and even though there was some bits from the previous season that they brought back that I didn't totally like, such as um, various love triangles again, I was more willing to forgive it because they included such nice stuff as, like, those relationships, uh, Santana struggling with um, her sexuality and opening it, uh, the continuing of uh, Karofsky's storyline where he almost succeeded in killing him. So that was just deep, and then what Kurt did to help him out, just, whoa, man. Uh, although I did think it was kind of stupid with what happened with the Warblers, really? Uh, that was just ridiculous. Listen, putting rock salt into a slushy, come on, okay? I mean, like, I know that it's a humiliating gag, okay? And I actually enjoyed that in season one, but trying to use it as a weapon just, really, yeah. Okay, so I think I've been kind of all over the place, but the general message I'm trying to send is that it did get better, and like the last fourth of the season, just... 
was really good because it was kind of like my uh, last year of high school because um, in the first three years of high school, I felt like it took me a couple of months to get firmly settled in high school, you know, figure out the norm for every class, establish who I talked to, who I really didn't talk to, figure out what I need to do for the homework, that kind of thing, but senior year, it only took me 10 days to get used to everybody, and it was like this window had opened and like sunlight was shining through and just like everything had just was working out for the better and it was the same thing here Quinn recovering from her injury I was so glad that um she had that story okay that they didn't kill her off Santana becoming more open to the group about her sexuality Rachel amending the problems she had with virtually everybody except perhaps Tina but even then Tina did get um over her annoyance about that when we had that pretty interesting episode where, like, everybody was a different character than before. That was hilarious. Yeah. And then, uh, Finn and Rachel firmly cementing themselves, and then everybody trying to think of a plan for their futures, graduating high school, winning nationals, just nice. Although, it was a bit of a bummer to, um, see that story arc end, because I really did enjoy the bit about them being the underdog back in season one. So it was just a bummer to lose that even though obviously you can't have them do that forever because even though this does try and do several of the cliches of people in high school, they want to illustrate um, time is passing, you know, because they mentioned tons of uh, current events, right? And that ending, that was a pretty nice ending. I wasn't really expecting Finn to do what he did there. Although I do think it was a way big of a bummer that could actually didn't get into not... I can never pronounce it. Nada? Just, I can't pronounce that. Although I have seen a little bit of season four, so I know that there is a continuation to um, his story arc, but... I don't know how much farther I'm going to get into this show, to be honest, because it's been pretty tough for me to talk about on this show, so I think what I'm going to do is that I'll eventually watch more of the show, but when I decide that um, I've seen all I want to of the show, which actually could be the entire show, because I know that there's three more seasons after this, I'm just going to discuss it all in one block, because... My original intention with this show was only to get through um, the first three seasons, and I did. I just happened to get season four as a gift during Christmas unexpectedly, so I have the option of continuing on without spending money. So, that was nice. Yeah, I'd say um, this is a good place to end. It wasn't necessarily the best overall review, I think, but I think I included a good amount of my thoughts here. Oh, and, uh, didn't I get, like, any moments where the songs kind of, like, took me away? Not really. There were some nice moments, like the prom bit, one or two nice bits at regionals or nationals, I forget which ones, but I didn't get anything close to how I felt in season one, but I wasn't as picky about that because the way I see this season, as long as it was better than last season, I'm perfectly okay with it.